Welcome back to my channel, YouTube subscribers and friends and like, and anyone else who has seen the video thumbnail and is here to get a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to get into van life as dirt cheap as possible. That van right there is for sale across the street. Dude wants 4000 talked him down to about 2000 If and it hasn't been going anywhere. It's been sitting there for... Uh, six months or something like that. He's got a new van right there. He they still use it, so that's why I'm not worried about it. He moves it every night after hours and parks it over there, puts it back, and they go shopping with it and everything. He's just got a new company van that's behind that old one right there that he's using now, and so he's selling that one. And it's got I think just under 200,000 miles on it, which is pretty steep. But the point of this video is that the step by step on how to get into van life cheap as possible. So that you can eventually live your dream on it. Uh, this video might get interrupted because I'm doing DoorDash. And so if I get an order, I'm going to have to pause the video. Go do the run and then redo the video. Or not redo, but re continue the video. So it might get interrupted here or there. As I'm DoorDashing tonight. As you can see from the hat, maybe. I don't know. Shows up in there or not. Right there. <sighs> well, I got my DoorDash hat on and DoorDashing. But anyway... Easiest way to do things right off the bat is sell everything that you can't fit in a huge apartment or a house into a vehicle. Things that you don't need. Um, a lot of your stuff in your kitchen you could sell that you just never use. There's a lot of things people buy. They try it out once or twice. And then it sits in their cabinet and, and they never use it. So your first thing on the list would be to sell everything that you do that to. You know, you try a couple pieces of clothing on for a little while. You like them and then... That coat or expensive jacket that you bought sits in the back of your closet and you never use it. Those things need to be sold right off the bat because obviously if you haven't used the item in six months, you're never going to. You just need to face facts and sell those items that you you know for a fact you'll never use again. And you can do so on the Facebook marketplace. On you, know, you can do so at secondhand stores sometimes. Take them and so on. Just advertise it and sell them. That would be your first step as you're sitting in your apartment or house or whatever, discovering and thinking about getting into van life. Second, after you do that and you have a little bit of income by yourself and try to save up, you know, don't go out and buy Starbucks coffee. Instead, buy a coffee maker and then make your own coffee. Don't go out and eat every day. Instead, just buy a bunch of Tupperware. Make your own meals at home because it's way cheaper. You can buy it for a week worth of food cost you about the same as a day or two going out to eat so do those little things change your lifestyle then you find a van like that for somewhere around four grand or two grand or whatever you talk them down you get up you buy a van for around a thousand or two thousand dollars give or take and the idea is later on you can switch that van out to something that you know you can go across country with but for now you just need a place to live that you can throw a mattress in so you buy that van that that guy just parked in front of waiting on the light I think or something but anyway you buy something like that nice and small something that's big enough for a bed and some clothes that's all you need and you buy it for around a thousand two thousand dollars somewhere in that ballpark there's a lot of vans older vehicles that are like two hundred thousand miles that are still dependable enough for in that town and you're not gonna take the thing out of town and adventuring or nothing like that you're still gonna work the same job that you've been working Instead of the difference now is when you move into that van and you put a $200 mattress or so, a decent ma mattress so you can sleep at night in that van, then you st still keep working the same job you've been working forever. Uh, and instead of $500 a month rent or $1,000 a month rent or $1,500 a month going to rent someplace or property tax in the house or whatever, instead of that bills, those bills and utilities that you're paying every month, now all of those, all that money that you were paying toward that, since you're not doing that anymore and you're living in a van, you just store that away. Fifteen hundred bucks a month. You know, let's say to make the math easier, let's say a thousand bucks a month, even times three months, of course, is three thousand, four thousand, so on down the line. That you're really fast and able to to build up emergency fund, build up a twenty thousand dollar van fund, all that in you know twenty thousand dollars is 20 months which is a about a year and a half of living in that same town working that same job and it sounds like long but you just put everything every penny that every pinch every penny until you get what you want and you could leave that town with the twenty thousand dollar brand new van 
in a very short time period because now that money that you were spending on rent and all those utilities and stuff that you paid for for a house or apartment is now going toward your $20,000 van. The The idea being that this van that you buy for $1,000 or $2,000 or whatever is just your in-town van. You don't take it out of town. You don't use nothing else. And they, they work fine. They'll their vehicles work fine for doing that. And it's a cheap, easy way to get into it. Spend a thousand on a van, spend two hundred on a mattress, repair the van, just the necessary repairs as as you go to keep it going enough for you. Or have you or keep your same commuter car that you had and live in the van at night to sleep in. And use your commuter car in your van to store stuff and take your commuter car back and forth to work and park your van in the public street anywhere or at a friend's house or whatever and live in it. And use that space to live in and then store your stuff and then not be paying something else. Or you could set yourself back a little bit by putting the valuable stuff that you can't fit in your van into a storage for 75 or or 100 bucks a month or something. If you have to. But you should really consider everything you put in that storage. Do you really want to, want to have that stuff or are you just holding on to it for sentimental value or what? And if, if sentimental value is the reason, take like the little photo book that you have or whatever and ask your family or friends or somebody to hold on to that for free and then get rid of the stuff that you're just you have that storage because you have that book and that kind of thing you know you just have to kind of reevaluate your, your life but in within a year time frame from when you buy an older van like that you can be out on the road with a brand new twenty thousand dollar van that's got the the uh full coverage warranty and everything on it on it and you can drive away with that fantastic sprinter or uh whatchamacallit dodge van if you want to i have another order from a restaurant so i'm gonna have to pause it for doordash be back in a second all right continuing from where we left off i'm now on the other side of shatter nebraska where I DoorDash at because I had a few three or four runs in the little spur they call them every now and then when DoorDash sends you a spur but anyway back to the video um where was I at oh yeah the van so you buy yourself a thousand dollar van or tw whatever it is thousand to possibly four thousand if you have to go that high but I would try to find something for a thousand or two thousand because you're only going to use it around town so as long as it runs and drives you know Technically speaking, as long as you're in nice weather, who cares if it has a heater, a radiator, an air conditioner? I mean, I will need a radiator, but I mean a heater, air conditioner, a radio is what I meant. <laughs> Do you need the radiator? That was kind of a funny, unexpected joke. But anyway, you know, as long as it has the very basic needs of what you need, because you're not going to have that van for very long. You, you know, the resale value of it is not going to be very much, but you're, you buy that as a step. A stepping stone to the real van that you want. So you save a thousand a month or you can tr probably save even more than that if you were paying like 1500 a month rent or whatever but let's go for the math to make math easier it's a thousand a month in a year is twelve thousand dollars in two years is twenty four thousand dollars and you can see where it goes from there and then obviously you try to save every penny that you can around that also and you can very easily add your savings up and then you know even if you can only do the thousand a month for the two years in two years time you have a twenty thousand dollar van you can buy right off the showroom floor and then that one you can do whatever build you want in it but the first van that you use in step one just basically throw a mattress and some clothes in it and live in that people can live like that if you just put your mindset to it that that is the way you know you're going to do things now the good news about staying in your hometown or the town that you've been living in for the last six years or who knows how many years that you've been living there is you probably have a lot of friends and family available and use those resources don't over well, stay your welcome, but you know you could you could offer a hundred bucks a month to a friend in town to use their laundry machine to shower at their place every so now and then. You know don't don't want to be in their face all the time, but you can you know to get the mail at your house like my admin and my channel does, and so on like that. You know you could offer some money here or there or something. Trade your use and your skills, your labor, your work, whatever you know, and offer up difference here or there. And, you know, you stay in, in that town where you know people, you work for that year or two, you buy that van as a, as a, a stepping stone between times, and you can get your $20,000 van in two years' time or way less if you spend more money than that. And you, you put it as a long-term goal, so to speak, as two years out from now, 
and you'll be really really happy that you did that driving away with a twenty thousand dollar van because if you buy the van brand new on the on step two a major step two or step three down the road if you buy the van brand new you have that warranty so at least in the next five years anything major that happens with that van supposedly and for the most part the dealerships cover that as long as you take it to a dealership at the routine maintenance cycle that's needed for all your maintenance as long as you keep up your end of the deal and keep everything maintenance wise that's what i learned from ah uh, worldwide transporting with worldwide is all those trucks are covered as long as they keep the maintenance up and it's the same thing for personal use too so you'd have five years of adventure free around the country knowing that anywhere you go you could you could you know have that readily available for you to fix stuff and then obviously before you set out you should i don't you don't do what i do but you should and i highly recommend what bob will says you should have at least a thousand dollar savings fund set up before you hit out of the town that you know and adventure to lands that you don't know because that way if you have a thousand dollars set back then uh, something comes up it's just an inconvenience you can spend a couple nights in a hotel room somewhere someplace or you can rent a u-haul van like bob wills did to go to alaska stuff like that and everything becomes an inconvenience instead of a, a tragedy a traumatic event that scares you out of doing it but when you look at van life compared to house life i just want to mention that sticks and bricks life you're in a stationary place if you tick somebody off they know exactly where you live they can look it up in public record if you own the house and it's a scary place to be in these auto glass safety is actually collision rated so it's actually stronger than house glass even with glass all the way around the car but i would say to get a panel wagon type style van where everything behind the driver's section is all metal you wouldn't want that all metal on the, like that van i showed you at the beginning of the video just for your own security because metal is better than glass would be and then like i say if you stayed in the house and stationary sticks and bricks your house is made of very flimsy glass and most houses these days pre-manufactured homes are made of wood and drywall and if somebody really wanted to just plow right through there all they would need is an axe you know or a chainsaw and they can just saw a hole in the side of your house and come in at you where they can't it'd be a lot harder to do that in a metal van and especially if you have a van with a metal partition behind this and i'm not trying to say that to scare anybody i'm just saying if you want to be really secure in life i mean way more secure than you can be in a house buy a metal van all the way around with a metal partition behind the seats you don't have to i'm just saying it's nice to have that i have another order for doordash so i'll uh, actually I'll probably end this video like and subscribe leave comments and i'll catch you on the next one that's pretty much everything i could say for an easy step-to-step -step tutorial on how to get into van life think of the, about those steps and just stay in your hometown and do that and then in a year or two you can head out and live your dreams peace